And welcome to the Now Debate. I'm Jared Walters, joined once again by my good friend Richard Oliver. And this time we'd like to welcome back, for the second time on the show, John Walls. Uh, Richard, John, how are you both? Good. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. John, thank you for uh, getting up at the uh, ungodly hour of, uh, I don't know, it must be about 6, 7 a.m. there. It's an hour that I only, until I met you, actually found out existed. Um, literally about six six months ago when we first spoke. Uh, because I've never actually seen that hour before, or at least not in a very long time anyway. So thank you so much for getting up early, because uh, once again you're joining us in the UK from the future. Because it's Wednesday where we are and Thursday where you are, and uh, as we are about to, you know, enjoy our evening and go to bed, you you've got an entire day yet to uh, to uh, embrace and, and and go through. So uh, how are you, John? How have you been? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, taking it easy. A couple of things happening, but not much. You know. And what about you, Reg? Yeah, I've been well, busy. We are, to be honest, um, John, we've been so busy at the moment with with UFO cases and different things. So, I mean, the, the sightings, this is what I kind of wanted to, as we had a chat before the show went out. What's your thoughts on some of the stuff that's been coming out with, like, the Pentagon and uh, the Israeli space minister and different things and Trump giving the end of one 80 days? And I just thought, because I haven't had a chance to speak to you, my friend, so... I just want to know what your yeah. thoughts were and stuff like that because you know it's adding it, it it's adding credence to all these things that all you know the people like us have been through and now it's starting to like you know it's starting to become mainstream and there's starting to be little things coming out little leaks and this and it's you know it, it it's helping the cause yeah well my thought on that is the um the UFO Cold War is heating up. Um, the uh, there are two factions. There's the faction that wants a slow release and for us to be enslaved. Um, there are a few reasons around that are happening. Things around that are happening now that that, that show that they want us enslaved um, without mentioning anything. Um, and there's the positive side, which um, I think it's a bit. I think it's a being called the Kurs, K U R S. You can look them up. Um, they've um, been here in the past. They went away. They came back probably 15 years ago. Um, they're going to stay here now, and they're going to stay here and help. Uh, a lot of the ships we're seeing at the moment are theirs and as well as the dark side but a lot of the ships are theirs they are fighting up there um, to give us freedom they want us to be free they want us to join their councils and they want us to become a um, intergalactic race but uh, the problem we're seeing at the moment is other councils like uh, the Galactic Council and um, I can't think of the other names of the other ones at the moment. There's about three of them that were supposed to be good but joined the side of the dark um, because they got all their little genetic experiments going that they don't want to stop. Um, whereas like um, the Kurs, the Umas, they're the, they're the lion beings. Um, I'd say the Tigetans and a few Palladians and that um, have all joined forces. And there's actually a bit of a civil war going on up there between the council, the Galactic Council, and these groups that I mentioned. 
um, from contacts from a couple of out-of-bodies. Um, I was back on the ship again. Probably about a week before that really big one I had. Mm. Um, and apparently the feeling I got when I came back is everything's gone to plan and that was really relaxed. I was really glad to get back because I don't really like being on the ship. Um, it's not, it doesn't feel right, but it's not bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It feels like I'm not supposed to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, so your current experience, John, before we come on here, and I would like you I would like you to touch on that, please. Um, before you do, said, though, before you do, I'm aware there's quite a lot of people who've joined the channel, but since John's been on last, can we... Sorry, Rich, didn't mean to interrupt, but just in case, there are people who are... We need to kind of bring up to speed on, on this. Can we give, like, a very slight overview about, jo like, where John is coming from, like, your stories and that? Just just a very sort of quick overview before we go into that, because that, what you were about to ask is really in-depth. And I just wonder, could we have a quick overview as to like where you're coming from, John, please? Because um, just for people who may have joined our channel over the last few months that might not have yeah. much of an idea as to <clears throat> who you are, wh why you sort of have, uh, why you have these beliefs and experiences, um, and obviously uh, sort of where that sort of come from, where this knowledge comes from, because we know from your last interview that you don't go on the net and sort of Google it. This is coming from direct contact. So could you kind of like sort of sum up very briefly um, just yep. like sort of where you've come from, your, just your background, that sort of thing. Would that be okay? Sorry, Rich, I didn't mean to cut yep. you off. Yeah, That's all right. That's all right. Um, well, it started when I was born. I was, apparently I was supposed to, I was really sick and I was supposed to die and I didn't. Um, I never found that out until... The last time I seen my father before he died, um, he lives in Australia, I live in New Zealand. Um, and as a kid, three years old, about three years old it started, uh, there were bugs coming to the window, big, from a three-year-old. I'd say they were about four foot tall. We found out, I found out later through hypnosis they were greys, um, and they used to take me and my brother and abduct us and do experiments on us. and you know, very um, traumatic. And I was scared of the dark until um, years later. And then um, in 1980, I had a really bad motorbike accident and died. Um, and I went up, I went up floating over my body. Um, I went up and then off to the side of the, you know, tunnel, um, the golden light. And um, to the left was an old man, an old wise man, and um, he gave me the choice to come back or to go. And I wanted to come back, but there was a price to coming back. And <coughs> I just agreed because I didn't want to leave. I was young, I hadn't lived my life. Uh, and um, they, he told me that he could fix me soft injuries but he uh, because of karma karmic rule he could fix it but he weren't going to just fix my broken bones and when i went to hospital i was amazed and i was in coma for proper coma for three days and then in, in and out for about three weeks and they said i'd be brain damaged and um and they couldn't get over how i had so many injuries basically without um, hurting any organs and no internal bleeding and stuff like that. Um, I didn't go into it that deep last time. Um, Jesus. And then since then, all strange, just strange shit's happened to me. And like, I've gone from being scared and wanting to commit suicide um, because this was in the 80s, uh, right at the, at the end of the 70s, start of the 80s. Um, you couldn't talk about it back then. My brother and my sister in law wanted to throw me in the loony bin. You know, yeah. and I don't know what was happening to me. I wanted to go to the loony bin um, until, and then I found I, I found um, a magazine called Nexus, 
and I found other people were having the same experiences. And then um, I, I've been going out of body all my life as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I, when I, when I, and I wasn't handling that as well because it felt similar to the near death experience, and I thought I was dying. And I kept thinking I was dying, even though I'd done it without any worries up until that point. Yeah. But, uh, but sporadic, not, I couldn't actually do it on purpose. And then I found the Monroe Institute. Yes. Um, Bob Munro. Mm-hmm. And i done the Gateway and about half the Lifeline um, uh, programs. And I learned how to go out of my body and go and retrieve souls and take them to the higher planes. Yeah. Um, and that led to more UFO experiences and more knowledge. And then I met Terry um, at a spiritualist um, um, event. And I'd been looking for someone to regress me for years. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> and that's where me and Terry started off. But we don't seem to be talking much. I asked him to come on the show and he basically dropped me off. So he's not interested anymore. Um, he's gone on a different path. I've gone on a different path. It's, it's just the way things work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I still get contact with the being that I think was that sent me back is called Armistice. Um, he's me, is my research um, and my spiritual research and my meditations and I meditate a lot more now. Um, I never used to. You asked me two years ago, three years ago, would I, would, do you meditate? And I, I'd have told you to pee off, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But now it's a bit different. And... It's just flowed and flowed and flowed, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. And then these beings came to me a year ago, and any time they get near me, it was like ugh, they were they they're like it was after it was a couple of years ago actually. I done a, hypno, a hyp, hypnotic regression with Mary Rodwell. Yeah, and she confirmed everything that I was saying. And also, um, when we came out, I came out, um, she asked me to describe myself, and I described myself, and she's a bit of a seer, and she said, well, that's exactly what she saw. Yeah. Um, she's not just a hypno- hip, 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 hypnotherapist, she's also a, a sort of a seer type person. And... Uh, she, was also, the, she, was all, she was almost expecting it, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she was expecting me to ring. Yeah, but I'd met her beforehand. Um, That's and I right. her off. Um, I met her at the at the UFA Centre here in um, Tarangan, Brazil. And uh, because I thought Terry was just... That's one of the reasons me and Terry split, because I basically turned... Unintentionally, you know what I mean? I felt like I'd turned into his show pony. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I didn't like it. Yeah. And I was getting um, followers, and for a while there, I was the most, uh, how would you put it, most known UFO um, abductee in New Zealand, and and the media wanted a piece of me, and I'd done, tw- I'd done 2020 um, New Zealand interview, and, and hypnosis, that's very, very um, shocking. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Yeah, yeah, you did. I think you uh, you sent it over to us before we did the first interview. Yeah. That, and, um, yeah. and if any of you guys want to talk uh, to, because we're not going to labour too much on, on that side of things, but just yeah. to sort of, uh, you know, to help you along a bit here, John, um, if any of you guys want to, uh, just a couple of, couple of notes and uh, John does go into this a lot more in his last interview that he did with us six months ago, and um, as well as the stuff with Mary Rodwell. Mary Rodwell has featured in films such as uh, Australian Skies, and I think she's been in a bit of Stephen Greer's work as well. If I'm not, I'm, I might be slightly off there, but I know she she's yeah. quite well known 
very similar realms of Dolores Cannon and and people like that, although works very differently. Um, works like more psychically and with UFOs, and obviously to yeah. for those who don't know them, Robert Munro Institute. Robert Munro is basically in Western sort of modern mythology, even though it's been known of in different traditions and cultures around the world for God knows how long. Uh, basically, popularized a technique. Um, for astral projection and out of body experience which he documented in several books one of which i believe is called adventures beyond the body if i'm if i'm not mistaken uh and the munro institute even though i think Man dr munro bob munro is now uh passed i know the munro institute is actually um still continuing and other people who learned from dr munro have now taken over it and are sort of um progress in the work that that he started so i just thought i'd give a little bit of an overview because there's a lot to take in when it comes to this sort of subject for some people that i know you know are watching that may have like a little bit less of an idea of the ufo world and the ufo law then so to speak so yeah carry on john sorry yeah, Skip Atwater was in charge of the Munro Institute when I started um, doing my stuff. And um, Bob's daughter, I her name now. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, uh, in the Munro Institute, um, all the high up Scientologists, this is one of the reasons I stopped doing it, um, Scientologists got hold of it. And. Uh, Oh, that's not Skip good. Scientologists, as far as I know. Okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not good. And Tom Cruise went on the Oprah Winfrey show and he said, um, when I go past an accident and someone's died, only I know I, I know what to do. And he was going on a whole of crap about that. And I didn't know at the time. And I thought, oh, you're right, mate. You know? And then yeah. I found out that, um, that they send all their high... Their high people, not the the slaves at the bottom, um, like their celebrities and their high up rich people. They send them all to do the gateway and the lifeline programs um, yeah. at the Monroe Institute. So, and that's the best place to do it. I did it um, um, on basically online, um, um, but uh, the best place to do it is at the place because the energy is there. You know, there's. Um, there's a certain amount of energies there that uh, that help you along and help you do it. Um, my favourite from there was a man named Bruce Mullen. Um, his books, if you really want to learn it properly, Bruce Mullen died last year um, of lung cancer, um, so he's on the other side now. Um, but if you really want to learn it for the layman, um, away from the Munro Institute, Bob Bob Munro's books are the best. Mm. But, well, uh, I, I just want to say, John, thanks for sharing this. I know, you know, in the light of the world we live in today, it is a bit more open-minded. It is a to, little. To, to, yeah, it is a little, but it's still it's still a big thing, and I just want to say thank you for sharing this. Yeah, with us, John. I absolutely. Was, like, it, I know, I know it, it's daunting. I've been up against the biggest sceptics, and they've said that I'm either the world's greatest actor and need, a, need an Oscar or this really happened. These abductions really happened. So, yeah. Um, but you've got to go into this not caring mm. what someone else thinks. And my years working with the dead, um, I think my, life, my whole life, I think, has got me ready for what's coming and what's coming many people aren't going to handle um, we are I'm not a religious man but there is truth in the book it's packed between a crap load of lies and what is coming is biblical and <laughs> we're a couple of steps away from it mm. Our know, step could take a year, could take a week, could take a month, could take five years. 
But when Armistice told me 12 years ago that within 10 years there will be a virus uh, that was already implanted in man um, and it had up to a 10 year, it had around, around a 10 year incubation period, I was, time for them is different than time for us. Um, it was two years off. What do you mean by already implanted by in, in man? Um, there are cloaked ships all over the earth. If all the ships that are cloaked around the earth um, turned off their cloaks, it would be black as night. That's how many ships are up there. There's a big war going on. Um, the war's been going on for eons and eons. They're time wars, basically. Um, the uh, I've lost me. I've lost my train of thought. I've never much sleep. Um, I've got to think of that again. What was the question again? Sorry. No, it's just uh, I, you already answered it, buddy. You already answered it. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, good. you already answered it. <laughs> brain, You're right. Brain's in a, in at the yeah, yeah, sure, right, John. We're just having a conversation. Don't worry about. I know. You yeah, know. yeah, it's just a friendly conversation. Yeah, I just I, I lose my train of thought now and then when I'm. Uh, yeah, the last couple of weeks have been a little bit. Uh, nothing bad, you know. Just not been able to sleep well. It happens. It's a massive energy shift going on, John. A massive energy that's, shift going. Is, yeah, it's the energy. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, it's the energy. It's the energies, and you can feel the energies coming through. And like the um, what's the where it goes white out? Um, the see my brain's gone again. Um, the scale where it shows the oh, the human shamanic residence. Shamanic residence. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, when people get it wrong on the internet, I usually growl them because I know it's straight off the top of your head, but I just couldn't think of it then, so I'll, I see how it happens. Um, yeah, this human resonance has been going up and down like a yo-yo. It's like, it's not done this in 27, 26,000 years, and we're right on the 26,000 year cusp. Um, I think we're coming out of the black hole. Like we talked about the black hole in the last, um, um, in the last interview, but like, and as you said, Richard, in the last one, I think it was you. Um, you asked, well, what about the black holes here? Um, well, they're only really big enough for a couple of ships to go through. Do you know what I mean? Like, because some of these ships are bigger than Earth. Um, but this one here, it's basically, um, you know, I'm not sure anymore, but um, I just thought it was the solar system. But I think it might be the actual universe going through one. And what happens is because the outside of a black hole is polarized, right? So you've got positive, negative, spinning mm. real fast, right? As the solar system, I'll use my um, bait thing here, right? As the solar system goes through, right? It goes through like that because it goes to positive back to negative, but it doesn't hit the side. And that's where the whole universe has its precession of an equinox. It's not just the Earth. It's every, every, every celestial body has that same um, infinity flow. Hmm. And um, that's the other thing I talk to, um, oh, that physics guy, I can't think of his name at the moment. He agreed with me. Um, Basically, um, he lives in Brazil, or he lived in Brazil. Um, I can't think of his name at the moment. It'll come to me. But um, I think we're coming out the other side. And there is prophecy scripture, scripture and prophecy from pretty much every country that says that we're being taken somewhere, and when we get there, um, was it the Indians? I think it's the Indians or someone like that. Um, so that it's going to be um, heavenly, and 
a universe full of light. We're going from like the Dal universe, the dark universe, into the light universe. And to travel it, um, for us, could be millions of years because we fell. We fell from the light universe to the dark universe, right? And that's why we hit the 3D because it spins so hard and it's got um, positive and negative, but to the extreme, right? Where we're going, we're all centered right down the middle. So our, our um, atoms get bigger, they're further apart, we're more corporeal, we, can, we, don't, we live on light um, and love and um, everybody gets on with everybody. Um, but it's not that perfect, right? There is still free will. There is still um, a little bit negative, but not much. It's not like here. We're here. It's either full on, full throttle one way, or full throttle the, or or, or, mm. or the or polarized. Way. Yeah, mm. it's very very polarized. That's what I was trying. It's very very polarized. Uh, but time will tell. You know, um, that's just my interpretation of my out of bodies, where I've been, um, the people on my planet. I told you about my planet, my outer body, didn't I, last time? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. and my and my ex-wife, that's uh, like a twelve foot tall ET. Um, that's what I was last life, or life before that one of the two. Um, but I was told um, by one psychic that um, I was. Um, one of the beings that came down here originally to um, um, what is it when you um, oh geez, my brain's gone on me like a um, to yeah I incarnated but I came down here I, I helped make the water um, that was my first job here was to help make the water and every life after that that I've been here I've worked either with death or sending someone on. Hmm. Um, and, you know, I've either been a doctor, I've worked with the dead, I was a Tibetan monk that sent um, spirits on mm -hmm. when we were, uh, well, someone in, in that area, in their mountains that sent the spirits on when when we still had them powers um, and today some of them still have them and what <clears> I think <throat> is we're all going to end up going to the rainbow body whereas you know how the Tibetan monks you've heard of the rainbow body and the Tibetan monks mm -hmm. that, I think that's where we're all going but we're all going to do it spontaneously like someone spontaneously combusts yes. that's what happens when uh, my personal opinion on um, spontaneous combustion is uh, an ET weapon, <laughs> basically. Um, but the rainbow body is when we come out the other side, we're going to shed our skin and we're all going to be together. So, you know, I don't know how, how or when or what or why or whether it's going to happen in stages. Um, but I've had a taste of it, and it's. I don't want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. Which leads on to your question, Rich. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It does. That's the question. I. I you know. I. That's intriguing because I. I've helped quite a few people that's gone through the same experience as yourself, John, and they have the same message. You know, they they, they have the same feeling that there is perfection and love and oneness and unity and all the things that this world could be and then you come back and it's you know it's just it's awful it's not wanting to come back and it's really striving to get back there yeah yeah but to get back there you can't 
um, force it or push it or make it quicker because to do that you're going against um, natural will or mm. um, armor so you can't go there unless you one either invited or, or taken um, and you can't be you can't do stupid stuff like killing yourself or or jumping you know or having an accident on purpose or or taking to yeah you, know, you can't do it. it that negates everything you just get mm. you get pulled out of the queue and thrown to the side you know mm -hmm. um, and that's just in layman's terms the simplest way I can think of it because they they actually instilled in me that there's certain things I can't do and the, after the last one. I've come back changed. I can't um, do or condone, even condone certain things I used to do that I thought was normal. Um, and it's been a real, it was a really hard, what did I get hold of you, about six weeks ago? About six weeks yeah. ago, yeah. But, um, about yeah. around about the turn of the year, about the like second week of January, something like that? Yeah, it's only been the last two, three weeks where I've started to feel a bit normal again. Mm. And that's why I had to cancel or postpone when we want you wanted me to come on in um, yeah we were, we were hoping yeah. to have you on in January and you had this very profound experience yeah did you want to know about it or do you want to ask me ask me questions or it's 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 entire if you'd like to share the experience that is up to you John uh, if you would like to share it I would be cool if you're not we, we can we can go down another line of question which which way would you feel more comfortable yeah. with I can share it, but it might pay to put it in the context from the first time up they came to me. Go on then. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. Um, I went out of my body um, halfway through last year. About halfway through last year. I, I just, just double checked. About halfway through last year, I first told you about the sisters. No, no, it wasn't in COVID. No, it was before COVID. So it was the year before. Oh, it was the year before last. Halfway through the year before last. Um, your time, you know, it's just... 2020, uh, but, 2020, but it was... Uh, <laughs> it happened to the best of us yeah. in 2020. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 2020, 2020 was a good year, and then it turned to four. Oh, no, 20, 2019 was a good year, and then it turned to four, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I I come out of my body, and I do every time I come out of my body, I look at myself, make sure I'm breathing, because a couple of times I come out of my body and I thought, oh, I'm dead, yay, <laughs> that was yeah, that was easy. I look at myself and I'm still breathing, like oh shit. <laughs> and then, so now I look at my that was the first couple of times I came out like um, properly with the Munro stuff, mm. and then I. Look at myself, make sure I'm breathing. I look at the clock, look at the time, and uh, then sometimes I just play around. When my son was little, um, we used to play all around the house. I'd, I'd go and get him out of his body, and we'd come play around the house. And he's just recently um, starting to vaguely remember some of that. Mm -hmm. um, He's quite, he's quite bright. He's, he can, he can see things from that, like, like the little resident grey we've got. He takes his little door just here and he takes his head down every now and then. A couple of times we've seen together. A couple of people that, uh, that have been here have actually seen to say, well, what was that? I said, oh, don't worry about it. And like my mate Wayne, I said, oh, don't worry about it. We were sitting here and having a couple of, I don't drink much. I drink probably twice a year. And we were sitting here having a couple of drinks and I only see him about twice a year these days. And the last time he was here, he, you know, what was that? And I said, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it's stuff. <laughs> and because uh, he's not, you know, he doesn't. None, basically, you know, apart from Wayne, knows a little bit. Um, none of my friends mm. know, this, know this happens to me, you know. Um, yeah, and about a year and a half ago, then, about a year and a half ago, probably, um, I came out of my body and Quite often, what I what I do 
is I set my intention to go somewhere. And I've set my intention to go to this place that I've made in a place called Focus 27. Now, for those unfamiliar, Focus 27 is the highest focus a human goes and uh, humanity. And humanity isn't just um, humans. It's all the animals, all the plants, all the rocks. That's what these people call humanity. It's not just us. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. is one of the things that's changed. Okay, um, I treat everything different now. Even like ants, and I used to kill all the ants. Kill the only thing I still kill, kill, and I feel bad for the spiders because I don't like. Them. <laughs> um, yeah, but I set my intention to go to um, to to this planet that I've made in Focus Twenty Seven, which is the highest vibrational level we go before we go out and be ETs and that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. many ETs, yeah. But when you, when you die, you still go there before you can pass it back on through the barrier because it's a barrier, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and it goes from the lowest vibrations, we generate ETs and we generate monsters, and then it goes up to where everything sits, waiting to come down. Um, and then it just goes on level up, level higher, vibration, higher vibration, higher vibration. So uh, would that be like the spirit? Well, we would consider the spirit world then the focus yes. twenty seven. Yeah. yeah. It is, it is, it, yeah, no, it's all the spirit world. It's just different vibrations of the spirit world. And when yeah. you are vibration, when you die, that's where you go. Yeah. But when you're there, when you're over the other side, you can raise your vibration a lot quicker and get up there. Or you can have a guide or an angel or um, some people even call them gods come down and grab you and take you up. Yeah. But most Christians go to focus 25, 26. Um, so Christians need not worry. <laughs> um, hell, there's no real hell. Hell's only what you make of it um, and your belief system. Uh, but sometimes the guides can't get through to somebody. And if someone's been in a long time uh, in, in a lower vibrational setting, right? What the guy does, because these people think they're still alive, okay, and that's their hell. Like the old man, he goes out on the porch and he sits in his rocking chair and he dies. That's it, right? He He's in a loop of waking up, going out on the porch and sitting in the rocking chair. Um, the lady who was scared of demons, um, her life is being chased by a banshee. The whole just on an internal loop and they get stuck in a loop mm -hmm. but they think they're alive. so what they do is they use people like me who um, have learned to um, traverse the outer body um, and astral realms just to and cut in they... there John what, yeah. what you just explained there we have a show coming up very shortly which we filmed mm -hmm. the first episode of called evidence of surviving death and uh in some of our earlier videos on the channel uh around the times we could actually go out and do cases properly we've actually done very similar things where um <clears throat> myself and richard using the ghost box have crossed a spirit over from that loop from that kind of very experience you've just described and we have we have come across that on several occasions on cases and Excuse me, what you described is very accurate compared to the evidence the ghost box gives, and that's going to be coming out um, on the channel shortly. Um, I just want to drop that in there because it, they, we do actually have evidence of that. Thank, thank you, Jared. That, that, that's perfect because that goes with what I was going to say is this isn't the only way that it's done. This is yeah. just one way. There's many ways that that we can save these um, lower vibrational souls, but they're all going to be saved anyway when when we hit out of this whatever we're in. I call it a black hole. It might not be, but I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Well, I set my attention to go to this Focus Twenty Seven, just so I explained how they said, oh, they they call they call people like me in to get their attention, and once they can see me, I get them to look at the guide 
and the guy's got them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Once, once it's a very similar thing we do, yeah. Yeah. But sometimes that doesn't work, especially like with a little kid, say, who's told to stay where he is. And he stays where he is in the car. Say a car comes on the curb and hits him and kills him. Right? Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's one well-known case in the, in the teachings and the learnings of how to do this. And they, because they, they give specific cases, there was this little boy and he was hit, told to stay where he was by his mum while she went to the shop and the car jumped the curb and killed him. Um, and he'd been over there for about 50 years, 50 or 60 years. And uh, he wouldn't go to a street. And he, he wouldn't he wouldn't leave for nobody, even for um, um, the, the person that was there out of body trying to get him. Uh, so uh, oh, he'd he'd go to him, sorry, but he wouldn't go to the guide. Mm-hmm. So he had to grab him and physically take him to Focus Twenty Seven. Now, um, I've had a couple of cases like that. Yeah. But um, as soon as I grabbed them and started taking them, because you've got to give them a, pull, a, a, a big uh, rush of pull, pure unconditional love. Yeah. And that makes them notice you. And while they're under the influence of the pure unconditional love, um, you can grab them. And then they usually see. If this is if they don't see it, then they usually see the the, the guide or the higher being ready to take them. Yeah. But sometimes mm-hmm. also have to take them, and I've not taken one by myself, but I've taken one me holding the, me holding the guide, and with with the person either or or, or grab them by the wrist, mm-hmm. and it's about halfway there that then they see the guide. But yeah. the amount of times I've I've been up there. Um, I feel quite emotional you telling me this because I was actually taught that same method and uh, yeah it's 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 mad it's it's mad like I've had those experiences when I've crossed spirit over yeah I think that same method's actually in um, the ancient um, texts of India and that as well Mm. Um, I've been told I, I haven't read it but I've been told that that same method is come, comes from, but Bob Munro got it um, from his out of body experiences. Yeah. Um, and that. But yeah, I was, I was standing there. That's just how this out of body thing works. So I thought I'd explain that for people who haven't didn't see the last one. Um, all of a sudden, I was in this dark place, and it's not long, yeah, I'm not normally in a dark place, but I wasn't scared. And these golden beings radiating rainbows started coming towards me and they got, oh, I'd say 30 feet, 20, 30 feet away from me and I couldn't handle it. I was, uh, it, it was, uh, the only way you can describe it, and forgive me for this, but it's like an orgasm but a million times stronger. Mm. But not sexual. Mm-hmm. This is love. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we get what you mean, John. You're right. Yeah, we get what you mean. I like, I like it. Um, but it's not sexual at all. This, mm. You know, and over about nine or ten times, because they leave me for a bit to handle it and then they get a bit got a bit closer got a bit closer and I could see their form and they for me they're humanoid and they had no form and then the next time really shocked me the next time they turned up and one of them cuddled me and it was the same feeling again because I got getting used to their energy you could feel them around but the human soul is a beautiful, well, we're not human soul, we're just a soul. Um, we can go anywhere we want. Um, but the soul is a beautiful thing. It adapts. And this is why the human being is, is so adaptable. It's because of the soul, not because of the genes and the, and the coding and all that, like um, a certain philanthropist is trying to say that likes computers. <laughs> um, 
Oh, yes. And, yeah. And uh, as I adapted and I got to cuddle one, they turned human. And the only way I could distinguish them from humans was the feel of them. And they talked to me. We talked telepathically. Um, but most people do talk telepathically. Um, and most species do talk telepathically here. But that's something I learned about the animals. 99.9% .9 of all animals here on Earth are telepathic. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're not telepathic is because our strings and strands were broken by the Anunnaki and by the, um, by the Draco. Um, and that was the last time before they took me on this journey. And they talked to me. Um, I did tell Steph what they said, but I can't remember, and I don't know if she remembers because it was so long ago. Um, because when I have an outer body and it's a real, a, a medium profound one, I remember it for two or three days and I forget it. Mm. And if I don't write it down. And then I have these super profound ones like the prison planet that I went to. Um, there was another one. I can't think of it at the moment. And then they come and got me for this mission. And oh, when they when I cuddled them, they said that I was I was chosen. Right? No, I'm not a chosen one. No, I'm not the Messiah. There are millions and millions of us chosen. Okay. Um, all it means is you were chosen to do a specific task. There is nothing more to it. There is no ego to it. Um, you were chosen for this. Okay, um, and that's basically that's what they told me when I when they turned human, um, and they even changed into family members. Because I said, "Can you be anybody?" And they said, "Basically, yeah, we can be anybody." And I said, "Well, you know, would you be my grand?" They turned into my great grandmother, who died when I was she was lady I I was going to see when I was hit on my bike, and yeah. And, and have my near death experience. And it was from, it was about 200 feet away from the door, and she seen it happen and didn't realize it was me. Um, yeah. That's freaky, yeah. And um, it, she turned, uh, it had a female energy, um, and it turned into my, grandma, my great grandmother, and that was really nice. And, um, then the next time they can't, they, well, they didn't come to me. They they don't come to you. They pull you to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And we're in the void again. And they said to me, we've got a job for you. It's a plum assignment. I'm trying to remember. I'm going to get some of this wrong because it's been so long and I haven't even... I, 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 when I wrote down the notes in the morning... And then we transcribed it a couple of days later because I still, rem still remembered most of it. But now time's passed. What's it been? Three months? Yeah. Um, some of the feelings gone. I'm still feeling emotional. Some of the feelings gone and some of the memories are gone because mm. you, know, you don't keep reading something you don't learn. Um, and they said to me, we've got a plum assignment for you. You don't have to take it. But we recommend you do, basically. And I said, "Yeah, well, what's it going to take?" I said, "I'm tired. I, I hadn't slept in days. I had, that was my first sleep I'd had in two and a half days because I get bad back pain and I can't sleep and that." Um, and I said, "No, I don't really want to do it. I'd, I'd just rather sleep." And they said, "Well, look, it's a plum assignment. You can't miss. It. You can't. You you can say no, but it, that's." We advise you not to, you know, and there was a bit of a conversation going between us, and there was about five of them um, in the in the in the darkness, um, just shining their light. They're beautiful, um, and I ended up going all right then. And they said, but to do this, we have to give you extra God spot. And they said it will be permanent. And I, I don't know what that means, basically. I know what God spark is. I know we've all got it, but have an extra. I said, 
and I'm an Australian, so we swear a lot. And I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I said, well, it's not going to F me up any, is it? <laughs> and they laugh. Um, like, yeah. Um, and I said, okay then. And it was like a group hug around me. Mm-hmm. And we were all of a sudden transformed to this big, beautiful hotel type uh, setting where the elite would um, would kill anybody to be in that sort of place. Yeah? Yeah. Um, even a place even the elites would find elite. Yeah. And only two of them came with me. Two of the older ladies. One that looked a bit like my granny. And uh, another one. And uh, we were sitting at the table and one of them touched me and said right you've got your god spark you've got that you've got extra god spark now all right so that i think the cuddle was getting me ready right and putting me there for the group hug and then she touched me basically you know just said right um, and then she, she pointed to a lady, a real pretty lady, walking towards the bar, because it was this big room. It was huge, and it was everything was. It felt like the decor was like 18th century. I'm mm. just trying to think of a time where I could put it in English terms. Mm. Um, it felt like 18th century, but ultra modern at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, no. it was made from stuff that I couldn't even figure out what it was. It felt like wood, but and looked a bit like wood, but you could tell it wasn't wood. It had no weight. It felt like it had no substance. It was more. It was like a project, projection, so mm. like a, like a hologram. Like, yeah. Like, mm. uh, start, um, so, yeah. That's what it felt like, but I know it wasn't. Um, and uh, as soon as she gave me this touch on the head, this female turned her head, looked at me, and came straight towards me. And I could tell she was a celestial. Well, what I call, I don't know what they are. I call them celestials. So that's just my term for them. Okay. And they, I turned around and they were gone, basically. Um, and... Uh, Oh, before that, they told me what I had to do. You know, like I had to take her upstairs and take her in the room and get her to come home. Because so I said, oh, she's a celestial. And it, it, it. and when she came to the table, um, as she got to the table, I looked over and that the old ladies had gone. And... Um, I, I was talking to her and talking to her, and I've, I've lost a bit of it here that I can't really remember. But my job basically was to get her upstairs and get her into a room where we could teleport her back to their own vibration. Because what happens is celestials come down all the time for a life. For a, for them, it's just like you know. Um, and they usually last to their 80s, 90s, some, some a bit older. Um, usually if you've got someone over 100, it's quite plausible that they're a celestial. But when they come down, if they have an unexpected exit or are held down or someone finds out that they're here, and they're held down by an incantation or a vibration lowering um, device. Um, when they die, they don't remember that they're a celestial, um, and that's what happened to this lady. And uh, 
she was because of the extra blood spark that I'd been given. Um, she was like smitten, and um, I asked her, "Did you want to come? Yeah, you know, asked her, did you want to come upstairs to the other bar upstairs?" And, that, and we talked about a little bit about like other worlds and home worlds and. Um, and she knew she was there, but she didn't know how she got there, like at this um, really flash place that the elite couldn't even afford to go to. Um, and um, we got we went upstairs, and there was this like static. Uh, I mean, like this whole place was beautiful. It was huge. It had take up. I reckon the size of it, in scope, I didn't go searching, but it felt like it was the size of a shopping mall. Um, just full of souls. Uh, it was like a transition area. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Areas? That's what it felt like. It felt like, more like a transition area. And when we went upstairs and turned the, the uh, what do you call it, you know, steps, steps you usually got to turn in them in old places and that, like that and when we hit the turn it was like a tingling and an electric shocky type feel mm -hmm. and we went up to this other little bar that was up in there and uh we were talking again and um she was wanting to she asked me what i did for a living and i said um i'm retired i do nothing um, and she asked me what's what uh, you know we're talking like money and, and she, she was talking money and things like that and I said well I don't use money I don't have money um, and she said well how can you be here and do this without any money and I basically told her do you want to do you want me to show you how do you, do you want to find out and she agreed and I said well would you like to come I said, you need to come to my room, basically, and think that she's going to say no, think that I'm going to stuff it up here. <laughs> and we went into the room, and I said, well, for you to find out, you have to hold me really tight. And she was all for that. And there, was, there was nothing sexual on my side, but she seemed quite smitten. And um, she was very beautiful. And I gave her a really tight squeeze, and there was this big gold light, and all of a sudden... We were standing on this balcony on this world that was like beyond belief. I, uh, this castle was, it was like, it took up a whole mountain. It was part of the mountain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the love feeling there was just off the charts. I mean, like, wow. And, um, Basically, um, I don't know when it was. I talked to the old ladies. I think I don't. I think it was there. I can't really remember now because I lost it a bit. Um, but the old ladies. I was going to give a request to the old ladies, and the old lady said that I must make her remember. Oh, that was there when I got there. The old ladies were there. They said. I must make her remember who she is and they can't do it, only I can do it and I know how. And I went, oh, shit, what am I going to do here? And I give her a cuddle again um, and said, and she said, why are we here? And I, I said to her, you know the reason, look inside yourself. Look inside yourself really deep and find out why we've come here. I said, you're the one that brought us here. I said, it was your energy that brought us here. Why are we here? And all of a sudden it went click. And like someone, um, you know, when you revive someone and they go, <gasps> like that. Mm -hmm. That's, I remember that. And that's very, um, very emotional. And... Then all of a sudden, the, there's 
instead of two of them, there was another five of them again behind me. And they told me they'd take it from there. And I went up into, I floated up into the sky. Just, you, we levitate, no worries. <laughs> it's no biggie. And just watched them from about 50 metres away, um, having their reunion, just falling my eyes out. And the next thing I was standing next to my body again, and shit, I think about three hours had gone past. So that was a big long one. It was a lot more than happened what I'm what I'm remembering telling you now. Well, I wrote you that thing, and mm -hmm. that was a couple of days after, and I'd lost probably half of it, over half of it by then. Um, I cried for three. I basically cried on not for three days, and even now it's it's hard holding it back and I don't I haven't heard from them since but they told me that they'd give me extra god spark um, I've been out and it's going to give me nothing more here basically it's when I go out of body and things and I think I've I've seen what it does because when I went up on the ship the last time um, The beings were a little bit different towards me, and uh, how would you put it? I was treated with respect, mm. and I actually got to see a couple more different ones. I don't know what they're called, but, and I've got vague thingy ones. I'm the one with a frog, a frog being, a frog human, human, a frog face, uh, pads. Mm. Other bird type being, there's many bird beings. Oh, wow, like, like uh, the one after human, um, the majority is bird, then then lizard. Um, but the majority of beings after after the human um, looking face, you know, you might know, have big eyes, might have no ears, no nose, but it's all the human face, um, like the greys and that. The next one is the birds. They're avians. There's so many races. That, yeah, <clears throat> that 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 really broke. That that broke me. I came back, and I, I remember jumping back in my body. I woke up straight away. It was about I don't know three, four o'clock in the morning, and I got straight up. And I was just, I had no energy. I had absolutely nothing. I couldn't, but I couldn't sleep. Um, and. I've got a totally different outlook on life now. Like how they told me that humanity isn't just humans. We're so self-centered and so selfish to think that we are the be-all and end-all and the only thing that matters here. Everything is psychic. Even we're psychic. We just can't. We've lost. We've, we've lost. We've got the sender. We've lost the receiver. Mm. Uh, we can talk to animals. That's why you know. A dog knows if you're scared. Well, they know from pheromones and that. But like, if you own a dog or a cat, you know that like this fella here, he's um, enough to see. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, he's he's totally wild to pretty much everybody but me. And I talk to him, and I I I I, I, tell, I say, come here in me in me noggin, and he'll come over. You know, goes in connection with one of my, with both yeah. of my dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. most people have, but some people have it more than others. You know, some people just have that little bit. Some people are just down here for a holiday, and they don't want a lot of spark. They just want to come down, uh, make some money, do some shopping, have a few nice things, and then go back up, so they can remanifest it up there. You know what I mean? Um, because mm. the thing I've learned about manifesting is you've got to experience before experience it before you can manifest it. Yeah. Um, mm. And it's look, this life is one big mind f. Can I mm. say the word? But it is, and that's something I've learned, and I'm coming to accept it. Like even last time I was on with this. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I was ready. 
I don't think I'm ready now, but I'm understanding. There is so much more to it than what I think. Well, John, I um, I got to be honest with you, my friend, right? That everything you just said, right, and all that, all that circumstance and everything that just happened to you, ties into so many beliefs, right? From a mediumistic point of view, psychic point of view, spiritual point of view, religious, you know, like you said with the animals, it all, it's all in there, right? It's all that universal story that people just have a glimpse of. And what they do is they take that one piece of the story and make a story around it. But, and, yeah. you know, through, through my own meditation, which I've never really gone into depth about until uh, listening to you speak. And I've I met other beings. I met beings that were animals. You know, I, I, I when I met the council as well, I never believed it, John. I never believed it until they started talking to us. And they said, Yeah, that's us what you met. You know, I didn't I thought it was just all this this I thought at some point I thought how obviously I researched stuff and I thought, Well I couldn't have made that up because I didn't know about it and is research to back up what the experience I had. And that was, I've got to be honest, John, that was beautiful, what you just articulated then about your experience, because there was everything that, that makes it all real. You know, the truth behind it, it's, it's just we're looking at it from different perspectives. And the problem is, you know, most of the time with this stuff, the reason it goes wrong is because somebody wants to gain from it. Yeah. Because the yeah, ego gets involved. You know, uh, yeah. the, my, cla my cat's blacker than your cat. This and comes in. Yeah. And I, I, I can it. make money yeah. from that. And Yeah. You know, that. Th no, I, I'm, I, I got to be honest, a lot different to the first time you come on the show. Uh, a lot yeah. different. You seem um, calmer and you just, it seems to be. You just seem to have a better grasp of it. So obviously that experience, John, was 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 profound. I mean, I can feel oh, it from you. Yeah, that was yes. deep. That was deep. That's why when you brought it up a bit before we come on this show, I thought my, I just thought to myself that needs to be discussed. And uh, yeah, I've got to be honest, my friend, that was that was that was spectacular. <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> I don't know how you feel, Dazzy, but that was like. Well, you know, yeah. there, there is one place. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I just sat back and let you guys speak. <laughs> <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> there's there's one race out there. Um, they look a little bit like the Mitra, but they're not. Greys, okay. Um, they are one of the oldest um, known beings. Okay, they're the, they they one they're one of the original five that started five. Um, an ET group that um, that overlooks our sector. Right? Mm. You know, our sector could be a couple of universes. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know how big a sector is. And um, they're in touch with all of our governments around the world. Okay, and they're most known for saying. 2,500 races, one species. Yeah. So I don't know what that means, but whether it means we have human type people or whether it, it encompasses birds and fish and dogs and cats. When we um, when we were doing the live streams and we first asked about the Council of Twelve, um, and it's been on the channel, there's videos I've asked about it, and I said, which species comprise the Council of Twelve? And uh, the reply was all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's a council of 12 doesn't mean that they don't oversee or help or counsel or, or govern or whatever they do, um, just 12 species. Mm. Um, and that council of 12, the species inside the Council of Twelve over time could change. Yeah. Because it don't necessarily have to be that twelve species. Yeah. Um, or that 
or, or, or that 12 races, sorry, because we're all one species. Um, because when we're out of body and we become pure light beings, we're, we're pure consciousness. We're pure light. We're, we're a ball, a, an atom, basically. Um, now, there's something that I did see, and I was meant to see it. Um, it was I told you, I think I, last time I was on, I think I told you, was I seen uh, all come, real bright orange all come down here under this table that I've got here that, that my laptop's sitting on. And it came out here, and it looked like there was a fairy inside, but I only got a quick glimpse of it. Mm. Now, I was watching um, James Gilliland, um, about a month ago, um, East City Ranch, and they took an, they took a photo of an orb going past, and they slowed it down, and it was bright, bright golden. It was about that round, and around the outsides was rings going, concentric rings going that way and that way, worlds within worlds. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when I seen that, I went. That's exactly what I saw under the table. And James said, and I, I'd already knew this anyway, from um, some of the beings that um, I'd encountered over the years, it wasn't that many compared to some people, <laughs> um, that it can be an inch in diameter on the outside and thousands of miles on the inside. Mm. Um, you know, space is inverted. Mm. Um, and we've got that, apparently, we've got that technology, we've had that technology since the 80s. Um, there are abductees who say that they were taken by our own people, by Black Ops um, or My Labs, and they've said that the ships landed in their backyard, and when they've got inside of it, it was hundreds of feet, thousands of feet long. Um, and they're basically all human apart from the odd grey and or odd reptilian. Um, and I've come across lots of stories like that because I look for stories like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, that are similar to mine. So I can corroborate my stories because I can't. It was it, it wasn't until I started doing that, and this was this was no, this was after my hypnosis. Before my hypnosis, I used to stumble across the old ones. I never really researched it. Um, and I still don't. I, I'm more into uh, my favourite sports politics. Um, you now, how most a lot of people like um, human behaviour. Um, most people like like football or rugby or soccer or mm. do you know what I mean? Where <clears throat> I don't, I, I like a little bit of motor, motor, motorcycle racing because I'm a bike enthusiast. Um, but my main sport is watching these clown politicians all over the world. And it's not just one country, it's every country. <laughs> I agree with that. that. How, how, how can they um, keep it up today? Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, you know, you've got... I can't think of a country that's got it right. Mm -hmm. I think we need to polish. I think we need we need a council. We need, like you say, like the council of twelve. We need a council yeah. that can be kicked off at any minute when they do something wrong, and be totally um, transparent and um, and um, uh, yeah, well, totally transparent and with only the best love and highest intention for humanity. You'd yeah. be amazed how the earth would turn around. Yeah, it's coming it is coming mm -hmm. we don't need a king we don't need the king we need a council because mm -hmm. yeah. um, there are a lot of books that we think are divine that do have divine spark but were that divine spark was coerced and stolen by man to control man and mm -hmm. the words around that message and it's usually one single message has been darkened and written and rewritten by man to control man mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but the core 
of the message is pure. I agree. I agree. Yeah. We're on the same page here, John. Yeah. That's but, why I love watching you. What's up, buddy? Uh, yeah, so you broke up then, John. Uh, that, that's why I love watching your work. You know, like, oh, well, thank of, you. The other, like, I watched a paranormal show last night on TV. And it was paranormal investigators in America. What a joke. Like, and these people brought home a rock. And then all these funny things started happening in their house. And the jug fell off the stove. And it looked like it had something tied to it pulling it. Yeah. And then her sheet lifted up. But you could see the sheet lifted up like that, like it was being pulled by a, a, a wire that was there. And you could mm. see it was just... And they were making... Like, when you get these TV shows, they make all these um, exaggerated emotional claims. Like, any minute they could have been snatched away to their death and blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, what a load of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it anyway, because it was in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the yeah. truth. These people are paid that it's all, everything you see on television is manufactured. And this show was, these American shows now are so manufactured that you've got to be either indoctrinated, brain dead, or hypnotized to, you know. But then again, they did roll out MK Ultra to the masses um, a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> a couple of decades so, now. We had to um, apologize for yeah, it, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Jared, I didn't Clinton think. actually apologised for it, didn't he, in '94? Yeah, yeah. But it was. Um, you you can actually look that up on YouTube as well. By the way, you can actually you can actually yeah. get that speech if you type into YouTube. Clinton apologises for MK Ultra. The speech is on YouTube, and you can see the President of the United States, which at the time was Bill Clinton, apologising for um, areas of the United States establishment then so as the military or, or whatever testing chemical weapons on the population mm. chemical mind weapons, yeah mm. uh, but i think there's something big coming i think it's just about there um we've got three different races working with the good governments and most of the negative races are being kicked out and there's only one of the reasons the world cabal um, is there, it's the beast. It's the beast story, basically. Um, he's been wounded in the head and the heel, he's in the corner, and he's fighting back. Uh, it's the boil that just popped. The boil has popped. The last time we were talking, the boil was about to pop. Now the mm. boil's popped. And we're going into a short dark period before the light shines. It's always darkest just before the dawn. That's what I they agree mean. with that. That's what I keep getting in my head. It's always darkest just. Before oh, it was darkest just before the dawn. And what Have about uh, and what about the orange man? Orange man, good. <laughs> <laughs> All is he, he's, look, um, it's the human way. It's the human condition. Yeah. You need a messiah. Well, we don't. But the no. average person needs a messiah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, they have to put that out there for optics. Optics import, uh, matter most. They're very important because of the way the human mind works. Um, yeah. And they figured out how the human mind works by the adding them. You know, like it's it's not rocket science. Um, and it's easier for a person to follow to follow another person than it is for a person to follow a group of unknowns. Yeah. They need to follow someone they love and respect. They loved what happened before. Uh, 2016, this man was loved and respected by all. In less than 24 hours, he was turned to a, the biggest villain the earth, has ever, the earth had ever seen. Mm -hmm. And 
before he'd done anything, before he'd done anything wrong. Yeah? Yeah. And it, was already, it was already there. Yeah, because politics is my sport, I've been over every, basically everything he said and everything he's done, and he's done one thing bad. But he'd already had that sorted with the Russians. And that was he bombed Syria. It's the only bad thing he's done that I can find. And in the same time period, I've found, I think it's 179 really bad things that the other side had done in that same time period. Mm. From then to then. <laughs> and they've done, they've done more than that since um, Uncle Joe um, to now than bad things than they've done <laughs> in that in the four year time. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. They're, and they're moving too quick. And humans don't like things moving too uh, as a collective. Humans no. as a collective, that's waking a lot of people up because they don't like their world changing fast. And mm -hmm. what's happening with this is it's turned to chaos. They don't know what they're doing. They're fighting back. They're going to go right. We we the carrot hasn't worked. We're going to use a stick. And that's the last thing they need after a year of lockdown. <laughs> the last thing they should do, sorry, after, uh, mm -hmm. after a year of lockdown. So I think we're going to see some, um, it's going to go like spike down, spike down, spike down. It's, we're going to see some really turbulent times over the next two or three months. And then, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'll assess, it, I'll assess it again after about three months. No. So yeah. I don't, I don't know a lot of the... Uh, you hear people saying things, you know, like I watch a few channels where they say, oh, I've got information on this, and oh, I've got information on that, you know. Um, until I can verify it, I just throw it in the back of my mind and go, yeah, all That's right. That's exactly what we advise people to do at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, people say oh, they've got information on this, so they've got information on that. Guys, you still with me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, this is where you've got to look at different commentators and different things. And, you know, some obviously will over time say this, 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 and this, and they might turn out to be right. But you've always got to kind of like just go with your own sort of research and, and your own um, intuition on it. And, um, yeah, a, a lot of the time it's a, it's a case of like, come what may. But it, it's certainly been a very interesting year so far mm. for very different reasons why last year there was a very interesting year so far yeah exactly um and Je i think jesse's got it right and uh, and thanks to jesse and a few other people i have confirmed a few things that we can't really talk about on here because it's um it'll be going out on youtube yeah um so we'll, we'll 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 leave that for another time um mm -hmm. but, uh, it uh i think it's going to have a good ending well, I, um, I, I know. A cheap plug here, guys. Jesse Ann. Is that the lady you were talking about? The lady we, we have on our show, Jesse Ann? John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, she's yeah. going to be joining us tomorrow for a special. Uh, we're going to be doing a No Debate special uh, on a Thursday um, for the second time in two yeah. weeks, actually. Um, but we are go we're going to be doing a nice uh, a second one with uh, with Anne tomorrow because she's going to be talking about the British royal family and the codes surrounding that because she and actually you, yourself as well Rich um, she's mm. been mentioning this for months that this has been building yeah. building building and building mm. and uh, this is why Richard approached me yesterday and said we should we need to do something on this at the time I probably wasn't paying much attention. Um, but I thought that you know the, the 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 both of them have actually been speaking about this on our shows for the last well the earliest I know Richard you brought it up mate was about Christ January twenty twelve when we came back from that year long break and, mm. and I know you actually brought it up in that Nostradamus now debate you actually brought it up in that and that was mm. now over fifteen months ago and you can go back go back on the now debate playlist. And you and Richard called it. He called it. You you actually no, called that, buddy. No. Yeah. So for you guys who want to know our take and uh, Jesse Ann's insight on what actually happened this week with regards to the royal family and how that factors into everything, 
join us tomorrow night at eight o'clock um, on this channel, and we'll tell you everything that you that we know. <laughs> we'll chat about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, just the royal family alone is going to um, shock the world so badly when the truth comes out that um, some will never recover. Uh, some of the things that's happened in the past. Uh... Well, I mean, you look at the news headlines, which we will discuss tomorrow, but hopefully we'll, I'll have an image of this. News headlines. Worst disaster hit the royal family in the last 80-odd years. Really? Considering what happened a couple of months back with a certain member of the royal family who yeah. was linked to a certain member of an organisation. Organisation, uh, yeah. Come on, you can't just say that. That shows. Yeah. That's showing their hand. Yeah. That's showing their hand. So, they, I mean, they, yeah. They, well, you, well you, you're going to actually be in good company by saying that, mate, because Lorraine Kelly actually pointed that fact out about... Yeah. Yeah, about uh, um, Lorraine Kelly actually pointed that fact out. So, but we'll, we'll get into that tomorrow because uh, I actually have an article on that that I was, I was planning to show. Um, and that, that was the article that you were talking about. I've actually come across that today as well. The redhead's husband. <laughs> um, yeah, are, are, are we talking about this little television program with a with a um, with an American lady? Um, they're talking about the worst in 80 years. Uh, yes. With dark skin babies. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I seen parts of it. I, I couldn't watch it all. I just got the uh, No, no. Mm. Um, no I've never. Uh, my father in law um, is a, a royal. Um, what do you call him? Uh, like a royalist. So, a royalist. Um, can't say nothing wrong about the Queen. You can't say nothing wrong about any of the royals. They, they, they poop don't stink. <laughs> he's he's changed a little bit lately, hasn't he? He was born. He's in he's English. That's uh, he was born in um, Lincoln, Lincolnshire. So yeah, oh. but uh, yeah, my. Uh, my wife is, uh, she was born in New Zealand, but uh, her dad came over when he was about 21, I think. Hmm. He's in his 70s. So, yeah. we're coming to the end of the show, guys. Is there anything else you wanted to tap into or talk about before um, we actually say goodbye on, on, on this one for tonight? Well, the only thing I've got is... We've got to keep an open mind. We've got to keep keep our heart open, but you've also got to watch out for um, like attacks. And attacks can come from anything, from a negative thought that you wouldn't normally think about, um, to a pain, to a vision. You know. Um, and just because someone has a vision doesn't mean they're schizophrenic. Um, just because someone hears voices doesn't mean they're schizophrenic or mad. Um, sometimes it's demonic. You know? And I've known this for years because I've, I've worked with, um, I've worked with uh, schizophrenics and in psych ward and that when I was working, when I first started working in the hospital. And um, I've heard and read a lot about people who'd been schizophrenic for years and had an exorcism and all of a sudden they're back to normal again. Uh, and I think they're both intertwined. You know, like, especially like, you, quite often you find someone becomes schizophrenic after taking certain drugs. Um, but it's usually ayahuasca or uh, heroin or morphine and things like that for long periods. Um, but that can also open the doorway for good ones to come in as well. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm not advocating 
taking any sort of drug to help good ones or bad ones come in. But you've got to be careful because you don't know what doors you're opening when you're doing these sorts of drugs. Um, and quite often it's going to be a bad one, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just got to keep an open mind, as James James Gilliland from East Iran says, open, open mind, pure intent, love and heart. And he's spot on. He's got, I can't, I can't add anything to that. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely agree with that. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. Well said. Well said, my friend. Well, this, I've got to be honest, John, this has been, right? I, 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 I wish this didn't have to end. Um, we, we need to sort something out because you, I think um, the way you spoke about that, John, I think, that, and I know you have a lot more to tell, so we'll have to arrange for something uh, if, if you wouldn't. If you wouldn't mind, because I could just talk about this till the cows come home. Um, and it's, you know, what it's, it's hard, it's hard in it, but in this situation with everything going on, to kind of, you know, we, we, we've, we've got to have faith. And we'd, like you said, we've got to live in the life of love. And we've got to, right? We tr- everything else has proven not to work. The only thing we've never done, everywhere in the world, they've set up a society based on love and unity and openness and chucked all the other nonsense out, has worked. It's worked perfectly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been sustained. It's, it's just perfect. It's a it's its own ecosystem. So we all got to start thinking like that. We all got to start letting go of the ego, kicking out the self, um, stop listening to that little voice in the back of our head, stop understand that there are forces in this world that will kick your ass even for the like you said you won't understand it will they t- they'll tell you all, all, all this wonderful stuff and they will destroy you and we, we will move forward and this is what's coming but we, this is what we this is the message we've had from the start of this show we, it's, it's doable it's doable it's more than doable it, it's mm. starting to happen. Um, mm. The people need to um, grow a backbone as well as a heart. Uh, yeah. And the thing, you know, with the shows is, like, I'm normally a, a reserved person that likes to keep to myself. And I think, well, what am I going to say? Yeah, because I don't like to... Um, one thing I'd never like to do is research or be ready for something. I like it coming straight from, you know, and, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and like this morning I said, shit, I don't even know what, apart from this experience, I don't know, I, and when you start, it just all starts to flow, you know, it just, mm-hmm. it just comes. Yeah, it, like it was, it. yeah, it was perfect, John. It was absolutely perfect, my friend. People have watched that and they will take something from that and they'll that's learn I mean. from it. That's all I want to happen. They I will don't t- honestly. Except to... Well, you did <coughs> yes, to you guys watching, if um, you want to give this a share, please do. Give it a share on so different social medias yeah. and, and different things yeah. like that, just so other people, maybe you have friends or family who might benefit from hearing some of this, these stories that John has to tell. Yeah. Uh, also, it's good to see you on BitChute too. Stuff. If That's, I can actually I get it to work, <laughs> I have been struggling with BitChute over the last couple. Honest to God, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and swing a sack of doorknobs at their headquarters or something. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they they're actually they're actually having a lot of trouble at the moment because they've been attacked a lot and it's hard to upload and download. But yeah, um, Minds M I N D S is working a lot better too. I'm on a whole heap of different. Um, well, I'm not on them. I, I watch a whole heap of different because YouTube doesn't have my videos that I want to watch anymore. So I have to go somewhere else and find them. And some of them are on mine, some of them are on BitChute, some of them are on Library. And Minds and Library, L B R Y, are, are working better at the moment than BitChute. But BitChute was really good up till about two months ago. And then all of a sudden, it um, buffering yeah. problems all the time and videos not coming up. And, but 
I don't know. Send us the, the send us the send us the names, John. Send us the names of these of these sites so we can uh, we can sort something out. Yeah, yeah. Because these these platforms will library you earn library coin every time you put a video up. Um, and uh, what's his name? Jeff Berwick, the Dollar Vigilante. Because I I do I, you know, I like to I like his work and I mm. I I've got a bit a little bit uh, invested in crypto cryptocurrencies, so I listen to him what he's got to say. And he only puts up one maybe probably one maybe two videos a week, and he's only been on there for about like eight months, and he's already got fourteen thousand dollars worth of um, library coins. So you know. Uh, well, we'll, 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 I will definitely. Um, that's what I've been saying. Is uh, I'm we'll have on a crypto, well, John. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to check that in there. We oh, have I, been having. I, I bought a little bit. I, I, I'm only got a little bit in there, but hmm. is basically that it's a gamble. You know, hmm. I'm not a gambler, and I'd rather gamble a hundred bucks of my own money um, on the long term than put it. I don't play pokies, I don't drink, I don't, you know, I stops. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, I smoke them one of these things that taste bloody horrible, but instead of costing me a hundred bucks every four days, it's costing me $70 a month. Yeah. You know? Well, John, yeah. look, thank you for coming on the show, right? Oh, thank you. We'll, we'll have a, a, a little, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little chat after the show goes off the air now. But, um... Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and you're more than welcome to come back on at any time. I just want to say to uh, the guys in the chat because we haven't really had much of a chance to say hi to hi to Amanda Wright, hi to Rose, hi to Purple Sammy, hi to uh, Kathy, hi to um, Solar Function, hi to Manny Man Lee, um, Manny and Ben. Um, I think I said Purple Sammy. Uh, I think I've got. There's quite a few on here today, so thank you, everyone. Amanda Twiggs. Um, yeah, I think I've kind of got everyone there. Um, oh, Tina Davis. Uh, hi to Tina. Anna is here. Hi, Anna. Alberta as well. Gillian. Thank you, everyone. If I have missed your names, I, I apologise. But I just want to say a quick thank you for, for you guys for coming on the show and join us on the chat and i hope you'll be to join us tomorrow um just to let you know that uh, we are now on tiktok and instagram and obviously on facebook just search paranormal now on twitter we are paranormal now jw for myself and paranormal now ro for richard um and our website www.paranormalinvestigations.com if you do need to get in touch with us for any reason perhaps you want to come on the show perhaps you've seen some footage perhaps uh, whatever it is that you you would like to get in touch with us about the email address the best way to get in touch with us is paranormalnow at outlook.com or contact us through our facebook page facebook.com forward slash paranormal now and uh, if you guys are new to the channel for the first time welcome thank you for joining us we put shows like this every week and different videos as well and we've got a lot of things coming up in the near future uh john do you have any sort of uh, outlets or anything that the, the people follow you on or, or um you, you don't really do anything like that or anything is it really is... now okay i used to but i i used to I had a really big uh, presence on Facebook, and I had a, a page called um, Alien Abductions and Other 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 Paranormal Confessions, um, and that was quite huge. I had about uh, thirty thousand people on that, but uh, they they kept um, blocking me, and so I, one day I just turned it off and ne never went back on. Um, and that was the only, my only real presence. I've got a YouTube page, but I just do my research and anything I like, I've saved my favorites under categories and people can look at it there, you know? Okay. But just sit John Walls and I've got all my um, hypnosis videos, all my interviews and everything um, on there. This one will probably go on there as well. I'll add it to me, um, to me favorites in there. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, I'm not that tech savvy. I'm more uh, uh, 
a wheels type man. I like my cars and bikes and, um, you know, and politics, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I've only, I've only really, I've only really turned politics into my sport in the last five years. You know, I don't know why. Just one day, something I, I was watch because I, I get emails come in, and it I was exciting. John, and John Rappaport, and uh, he was talking about this the idiot things the politicians do, and that sort of got me mind thinking. Well, what other idiot things are politicians doing? And it's, <laughs> It's not more like a sport. It's more like um, gaps and the stupid things politicians do. And it just makes sometimes it makes me angry, but it more it makes me realise how we're led by just a total bunch of buffoons worldwide. Even now, even my country. Yeah, you know, it's idiots. It's I reckon ninety percent of all politicians, higher politicians around the world, are on the take or, or being blackmailed. They have to be to act the way they act. They don't act human or not human. You know, I don't know. It's just, it's just are they not human? <laughs> no, I don't think they <laughs> no, they're not freaking human. <laughs> anyway, you be a man. yeah. I, Thanks. Yeah, I, I think there's over four hundred races that basically. With a bit of makeup, can't distinguish between them and us. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, they might look a bit different, but you'd still think, oh yeah, that's a human. They're just not right. Uh, mm. Yeah, there's one or two out there that uh, are like that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. We'll have a talk about that. So, I think on another show, John. We keep after another show. Because I want to yeah. talk about this. I think the people who watch this have actually been like, I can, I can tell they're like, oh my god, this is amazing. So we'll keep this for another show, I think. And uh, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's been honestly, John. Thank you so much for coming on. But still, don't go anywhere though, because we, I want to stay on the line with you. And um, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there, right? All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. I will catch you tomorrow uh, for our second uh, live now debate of the week. Take care yeah. yourselves. Okay. Love and night, everyone. Yeah. Take care. Great part of peeps. See you next.